Hi folks. So I am going to try to walk through the installation instructions to install Python and Conda and Reticulate and Quarto, which are the things that I think we need to move forward in this class. I have a new laptop and so there might be all kinds of wrinkles in this, but hopefully it'll be realistic. And I'm going to try walking through some instructions from Tiffany Timbers um, and we'll just kind of see how it goes. So let's see, step one, it says bash shell. And they're asking me to change the default shell in my terminal to bash. So I have the terminal here in my, my dock. I don't know if you can see it, it might be outside my screen recording, but I can open it up. You could also search for that in your spotlight if you wanted to. And I'm gonna type chsh minus s slash bin slash bash, B-A-S-H, and hit enter. And then it wants my password. And this is one of those weird things where when I, when I type my password, it doesn't actually look like anything's typing on the screen, but I hit enter and it looks like I typed my password correctly. Um, and it says you have to quit all instances of open terminals and then restart the terminal. Let's see if that worked. It says, the default interactive shell is now the sh. Ah, okay, it's just giving me a message. Okay, I think that's fine. So um, we're gonna use Python and Conda. So we're gonna need to use the mini Conda platform and there's a an install. So I'm gonna just open this in a new tab. Oh, it's just starting to download. Uh, maybe that's not the choice. I'm gonna open this mini Conda. The package, oh, but I actually have an Apple M1. So the default that she had linked there is not gonna work. If you have a slightly older Mac, probably this would be the one. And then if you're following the Windows instructions, I think that would be different. So I'm gonna actually download this one. And then I'm going to open it up from my downloads. Ooh, okay. I'm just gonna Google .sh file because I don't really know what that is. It's a shell script, so how do I run it? Um, I need to make the file executable. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna need to do chmod plus x and then I can paste in that name, okay. And then it looks like I can do bash and then paste in that name. And it's giving me some instructions. Please review the license agreement. Okay, I kind of saw that in the document. Oh, okay. And then I can sort of scroll through it by hitting enter. I can probably hit escape to get out. Nope. Uh, what about control C? Yep, that worked. Do you accept the license terms? I'm gonna type yes and hit enter. It's now gonna be installed in this location. It seems like a fine place, so I'll press enter. Unpacking payload. Installation finished. Do you wish the installer to initialize Miniconda 3 by running Conda init? Sure, yes. Thank you for installing Miniconda. Okay, so that seems like that worked. So I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna hit back in my browser. So after installation, restart the terminal. Okay, terminal, quit terminal, restart terminal. It says you'll see base preceding your prompt string. Awesome. And then I can ask which version it installed by doing conda minus minus version. And I get conda 4.10.1. Awesome. Okay, next type the following to ask for the version of Python, Python minus minus version, and Python 3.8.11. Awesome. So I'm a little bit, um, you know, beyond her, but she wrote these instructions a couple years ago. So I think that that's all fine. And let's see, it says Conda installs packages from different online repositories, which are called channels. Um, so let's see add the conda forge channel by typing this in i'm just going to copy and paste because i'm lazy oops 
hit enter. Okay. Um, and then we can install the key packages needed for the start of our program. Okay. So conda install and then slash, and probably I hit enter numpy is equal to one point star slash enter and pandas is equal to one point star and no slash and hit enter. Collecting package metadata, following packages will be updated. It looks like I want to type Y so that I can proceed. And it's downloading a bunch of stuff, verifying, awesome, okay. Um, okay, and I've already got R going, so I probably don't need to do that. Um, it says some packages rely on the dependency X chords. I kind of think that I already installed that on this computer, even though it's pretty new. Um, yeah, I do enough programming that I, I installed that a little bit ago. So if you are on a Mac and you haven't installed it, you probably want to do that. I've got our studio installed and I've got the tidyverse packages. Sweet. So hopefully that's Python and Conda. And for that part, I was following her instructions. And then I'd also like to get the reticulate R package. And again, um, Dr. Timbers has some instructions. So let's see. You can now use RStudio as an effective Python IDE. To do so, follow these steps after installing Miniconda. I've got Miniconda. So I'm going to, looks like I need to use RStudio or R to install some things. So I'm gonna just open up RStudio. And I can probably close this off, okay. Um, so I want to install the reticulate package. So install dot packages, parentheses, quotes, reticulate, hit enter. And it looks like it worked. And it says install the PNG package, a dependency that's not well managed yet. That might have been changed since this time when she wrote this, but we'll just do it, doesn't hurt. Install packages, PNG, and hit enter. Awesome. Um, find your path to Miniconda by typing which Python in terminal, which Python. And I probably need to copy this path. So I'm going to try and do that. Select it, control C, maybe that worked. Okay, and then I need to specify that reticulate should use the miniconda version of Python in my R profile file. So I'm going to type use this colon colon edit underscore R underscore profile, open paren close paren, and then it'll open up my dot R profile and it should open in R Studio. Add this to your R profile file. So I'm gonna copy this actually, put that in there and I need my path. So I need to go back and copy that again. And then I'll try and put it inside those quotes. Kind of looks like it worked. Okay. And I'm guessing that I need to save this file. She didn't save that, say that, but I'm pretty sure. So I just controlled, control S. In the terminal, type this, copy code not found. I think that it's trying to get me to open a file. So I'm gonna try v slash dot bash profile. Let's see if that works. Hit enter. Okay. And then this has opened up a file for me. Um, and usually if I want to insert something, I have to hit I and then it switches to say insert at the bottom. Add the line export path opt miniconda three bin colon dollar sign path replacing slash opt miniconda three slash bin with the path to the folder containing your miniconda Python. We're gonna see if I can do this. She doesn't really tell us where to put it. So, well, actually it looks like it's in here. Um, if this, then that, else, then else, export path, miniconda three bin path. I kind of think it's in here. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of the insert 
and um, shift ZZ to um, save and exit. So I will see if I'm right about this. So let's see, I've saved that. I'm gonna close it. Session restart R. And then let's see if we can actually use it by typing this in the R console. Okay. It kind of looks like it worked. It says Python 3.8.11, reticulate, REPL, a Python interpreter in R, uh, enter exit or quit to exit the REPL and return to R. Okay, so I'm gonna just exit for right now. And now I've got, I'm back to the single um, colon. Actually, maybe you can't see that right now. Let me see if I can make this a little bit smaller. So uh, I'll just run this one more time. Um, so it looks like it actually worked. And then it said I could type exit to exit out. So I've got the three um, greater than signs. That's kind of like the Python environment. And now I've got the single greater than sign. That's the R environment. Sweet. So I think it's working. Um, so that's all good. I'm not a Windows user, so I'm just going to skip all of that. And then the last piece, so I did the Python and Conda installation, the Reticulate installation, and now I also would like you to install Quarto. Um, Quarto is basically sort of like R Markdown, but it's the next generation, which is going to be um, useful for Jupyter and RStudio and VS Code and text editor. Um, so I just like to try it out. So it looks like when I go to this website, it detects my system. It suggests that I get the Mac OS version of it. I'm just gonna check in the more downloads to make sure there isn't one for a different version of Mac. It looks like there isn't. So I'm just gonna click this download button and it downloaded, great. And then I'm gonna click that package installer and we'll see how this goes. So I'd like to install it for all users. Install, read my password, install software. And it says it was successful. Awesome. Um, and I'll move that installer to the trash. Great. So let's see if we can verify that this was working. This is the Jupyter Notebook version. I don't know that I want to do that. Um, so I'm going to switch to RStudio. So if you want to follow along, you need to download the latest release of RStudio. Let's see what version I have, 2022.02. Okay, so I'm good. You might need to update your RStudio. Um, and then download this Quarto document and open it in RStudio. Oops. Um, I still have that open. All right, so now here's a Quarto document. Sort of looks like R Markdown. Sweet. Um, and what if I stuck in, oh, maybe this isn't what I want, because um, it's putting in an R chunk uh, by default. Um, so we're gonna see, um, I might need to do some research to see if we can actually use Python chunks in Quarto in R Studio. I know you can use Python chunks in R Markdown in R Studio. So, I could put a new chunk and I could say I want it to be a Python chunk and put some Python code in there. Um, but I'm gonna have to research more about Quarto. Anyway, um, I think that I was able to install Python and Conda, Reticulate and Quarto. So I think that I'm all set up. Um, of course, this walkthrough video is probably more useful if you're on a Mac than on Windows, but it looks like um, those instructions from Tiffany Timbers are pretty up-to-date for Mac, so I'd guess that they're pretty up-to-date for Windows as well. And you can let me know if you have any questions about that.